Triton Showers National Rally Championship has headed north this weekend to Monaghan for round three, the Four Seasons Hotel Stages Rally. The fierce competition in this series has stepped up a notch this weekend as the top three contenders to take the win here all have a local connection to this event. Our top seed is Donna Kelly and he is navigated by Monaghan man Connor Foley who is going to be really eager to take the win at this event yet again this year. Josh Moffat is our championship leader at the moment in the 2019 series so he wants to take the win here at his local event and Sam Moffat is our 2017 champion. He wants to take the win here for the fourth time. There's certainly no shortage of contenders for the overall win, and as a counting round of the Sligo Palettes Border Rally Championship, there's strong competition throughout the capacity entry. The home event's always very special to everybody, and uh, I suppose we've won it twice before, but uh, the past two years ha hasn't been so good to us, so hopefully we can turn it around this year. It's a pity we didn't get a finish the last day, but uh, we're going to be a big race on today. Um, Josh is on form, um, but you know we're going to keep battling away and see how we get on. Last year's winner, Donna Kelly, had some disappointing events in a Skoda Fabia R5 this year, and with his unconquered home rally in Donegal looming on the horizon, the former champion was back in his trusty Ford Focus WRC for the Monaghan stages. We started this year in R5, we didn't have much luck at all. We, we had uh, a few off-road excursions and uh, didn't go according to plan, so yeah, we're going to revert to the, the world car for Donegal. We think there'll be plenty of drivers uh, at that level, so we'd better get some miles under our belts and get back familiar with the old car. And yeah, so we're going to use this event and maybe Munster as well to do that. Three challenging stages, each done three times, lay ahead for the crews. Quickest across the first loop of three was the Fiesta WRC of Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes. The championship leaders continued their impressive run of form to open up a 15 second lead. Second to Moffat was the Ford Focus of Donna Kelly. The 2015 champion felt he wasn't as committed as he could have been as he readjusted to WRC power after a short-lived spell in the Skoda Fabia R5. Flat to the chicane now, short two left. The flat two right, 120. Flat one left, 60. Keep left door crest in the flat two right lane, 120. Chicane right entry, four bales in deep. And... One left over crest, keep in, and three right down past the farm. A further six seconds back in third was the Fiesta WRC of 2016 champion Roy White. He and navigator James O'Brien were content with their position but would be expecting to increase their pace as the day progressed. Declan Boyle admitted that his confidence had been dented after his off at the last round in Longford and it was taking the reigning champion some time to get settled back in. He and cousin Brian were seven seconds further back in fourth. In an interesting subplot to the rally, Sam and Josh Moffat have a gentleman's agreement to alternate use of the family Fiesta WRC on their home rally and 2017 champion Sam was due to use it this year. But in light of Josh's title bid, Sam relinquished his claim on it and was now over half a minute off the lead in his Fiesta R5. Second in the R5 category was the Skoda Fabia of Darren Gass. He and navigator Enda Sherry took sixth overall at the last round in Longford and the pair were on course for a similar result so far in Monaghan. 120 men you're breaking for turn six right. Sixty-three right at the gate. Forty slow. Five left. What's it? Five left. Pat Herson felt he chose the wrong tyres for the opening loop and it really cost him on the third stage as he lost a lot of time with an off-road incident. The former champion frustrated with his morning's efforts. Aye, we were off in there so we were in the wrong tyres and we are just pushing too much really, you know. But to be honest, it was on a hairpin where she, she just didn't come round on us the way we needed to, you know. So uh, we ended up having to reverse back and mess about with. 
Another driver unhappy with the opening loop was Joe McGonagall. His Mini WRC was suffering a misfire and he was eager to get back to service to rectify the problem. Matters can always be worse, however, and it was a disappointing home rally for Stephen Wright, who had been eighth overall before a heavy landing after a jump in stage three caused damage to his Fiesta R5, and he slid off the road a few corners later. Kevin Barrett slowed to make sure Wright and his navigator Stephen Thornton were okay, but overall he was happy with his first drive over the three stages. Right at the cliff, okay, 200. Four bear chicane right in three. Great stages and great atmosphere here in Monon Town. Absolutely, look, it's great to have the service in the middle of the town. It brings the people in, and even out in the stages, a lot of people are out, and, and another great entry. So, like, you know, it's, it's good all around. Not so happy was Kevin's son, Paul Barrett, who felt he chose too soft a tyre and his new Fiesta R5 set too stiff for the demanding stages. Welshman Hugh Hunter was back for another round of the championship and held 10th overall in his Ford Focus WRC. Just three seconds back in 11th was the Subaru S12 WRC of Declan McCrory. Absolute crest. Remember our jump, right? This is down to the jump. 200. You're keeping right for five right then. Stay left over the big jump. Five left, only 100. Square right up the hill. Lovely. The harder you hit that, the better. Ah. In the two-wheel drive battle, Damien Toner and Denver Rafferty were the early pace setters in their Ford Escort Mark II. They slipped a second after stage two and sadly they went off the road and out of the rally on stage three. <laughs> Kevin Eves took over the class lead on stage two, climbing up to ninth overall in his Toyota Corolla. He was eager to get back to service and change to a harder compound tire for the next group of stages. Kevin, you're leading the two-wheel drive so far. A smooth run out there for you. Yeah, no, hey, we, we kind of had a good loop there now, so I think we have 30, 30 seconds or so, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Don't be getting scared now. After an inauspicious start when he overshot on stage one, local driver David Moffat was putting his two-liter starter to good use now, and he set quickest two-wheel drive time on stage three to trail Eves by 15 seconds in the category. David, huge congratulations are in order, and I can't believe you're actually out rallying because your good lady wife, she gave birth yesterday to a little girl, little boy? Little boy. She's Aww. a little boy yesterday, well, in the middle of Friday night. Uh, so, wow, well, we're delighted he's here and he's healthy and he's well. Probably shouldn't be here, but <laughs> she let me out. Another local, Raymond Conlon, was just over a second further back in the Corolla, holding third in the two-wheel drive battle and 13th overall. J.F. Shovelin was having a good championship so far and he was happy to be the leading Mark II escort after three stages. One of Shovelin's rivals for the Mark II championship is Stuart Darcy, but he's finding the transition from Darien T90 to escort Mark II a difficult one and a spin on stage two cost him 30 seconds and really dented his confidence. It was good to see Declan Gallagher back out on the Monaghan stages after a couple of years break. Focusing on the Forest Rally Championship more often these days, Mickey Conlon couldn't resist the lure of his home tarmac event, but he was 10 seconds adrift of Gallagher after three stages. Another local driver, John O'Dugan, was thrilling the crowds on his home event, and he was just a handful of seconds off Conlon. 200 over the rock, watch the stone. <laughs> Michael Boyle wasn't having much luck so far this season and his troubles continued in Monaghan when he retired after damaging his Group N Mitsubishi at a chicane on stage one. Leading Group N after the opening loop was Shane Maguire, but he was concerned about an overheating engine.
After servicing back in Monaghan Town, the crews tackled a second drive across the three stages and it was to prove a pivotal loop for many. Rally leaders Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes eased off a little and were second quickest on stage 4, which prompted a reaction on stage 5 where they set fastest time to restore their 15 second lead. But a puncture in stage 6 really upset the apple cart and they slipped to second overall and now trail Donna Kelly and Connor Foley by 15 seconds with three stages to go. Kelly was surprised to learn that he was now in the lead but he knew there would be a strong challenge from Moffat on the final loop of three. Roy White was still holding third, but Josh Moffat's misfortune meant that there was just 0.2 of a second between them at the end of six stages. White had been coming under pressure from Declan Boyle, who closed to within three seconds after stage five, but differential trouble and the Fiesta saw him slip 10 seconds further back after stage six. So that's how the leaderboard looked so far at the Four Seasons Hotel Monaghan Stages Rally, where we're sure to see some more twists and turns before the end. Drama here in Monaghan for round three of the Triton Showers National Rally Championship as a puncture sees Josh Moffat drop to second place and Donna Kelly is our leader for the moment. Lots more action to come. Do join us after the break. Welcome back to Monaghan for part two of the Four Seasons Hotel Stages Rally. With the challenging stages taking their toll on the cars, the service area was a hive of activity as the crews prepared for the final drive through the loop of three stages. Josh, a puncture causing problems, what happened? Yeah, just uh, seven kilometers towards the end of the last stage there, we. We picked up a puncture and we're not sure where. It's, there was quite a rough section, so it was probably in there. But yeah, look, we're quite gutted. We've dropped 32 seconds in there. So we'll have a look at it here and we might go for a push. Look, it's about 15 seconds. Uh, Josh took 15 on the first loop. He's going to come at us uh, flat out now to, to get the lead back, you know, and uh, we're going to do our best to try and defend it. Before we see how the overall contest panned out, let's wrap up the class battles now. And in the Junior Class 16 category, Anya Phelan survived this moment on stage 8 to take third place points for the championship. Stephen Reynolds and Derek McCarthy took maximum points as Class 16 winner Jack Brunton isn't registered for the Triton Series. In Class 16A, winners of the last round, David Kelly and Kenny Bustard, only got one stage under their belt before retiring their Toyota Starlet. Father and son crew Dara McNairn and Trevor Graham took third place in their Toyota Corolla. Johnny Armstrong and Philly Mitchell brought their Citroen C2 to second and last for the second event in a row. Aaron and Ben McIntyre and the Starlet put a non-finish at the last round behind them with a convincing win at round three in Monaghan. We just tried to keep our cool and we got to the end and your man Armstrong took five of us on the set, first one out of service and we had to buck up again, we fell asleep so we're happy enough to get here. It's tricky conditions all day so we're happy enough. In the historic class, Alan Fleming and Paul Tierney took third place in the Escort Mark I. Malcolm Pedlow and John Henderson took second place in their BMW. Local man Brendan McAree took the win in the historic class with James Henry calling the notes in the Porsche. Keith Ewing and Sean Quigley took a dominant win in the Class 1 Honda Civic. Keelan Grogan and Des Sherlock won Class 2 in their Skoda Fabia. Packy Duffy and Evan Hughes took the Class 3 win in their Honda Civic. Lloyd Hutchinson and Willie Fitzpatrick took their second Class 9 win of the season in their Austin Mini. 
Class 10 honours went to Mickey Brennan and Paddy McKeague, who clearly enjoyed their local stages in the crowd-pleasing Vauxhall Nova. Another local entertainer in a Nova, Derek Mackerel, is a regular on the Forestry Championship, and he was making his tarmac debut on his home rally. Some mistakes were inevitable. Crest and a torn hairpin right at the three. Hairpin right here at the three. Go on, on the handbrake, handbrake. Third in Class 11F, going into the final stage, a hole in the engine brought about a disappointing end to a promising debut. It was a good day for Brian Lavelle and Shane Corcoran. The Mayo crew won the Sligo Palettes Drive of the Day award, finished second in Class 11F, but took maximum points as class winners on the day at Gary McNamee and Brian Brady aren't registered for the Triton Series. In Class 11 or Jason Black and Carl Egan were going for three wins out of three after a great start to their championship campaign. Right on Chris, jump 40. Caution, Chris, three left. Caution, Chris, three left. And caution, Chris, short. Four right over gravel, past the house. 60, turn square right over gravel, be neat. Carry off somewhere now. One right opens, long two right over Chris. It's very long now. Leading after the first loop, sadly they retired with mechanical trouble in the Toyota Starlet. Former Class 11 or champions Seamus Conley and Gary McCrudden were second at last after three stages. On square left in and go, push to right. 100 into a fast three left in, do not come out of her, into a 230. Unfortunately, a mishap on stage four meant they had to settle for sixth in class. As others fell by the wayside, Martin Connolly stayed the course to take the class 11 or win in his Toyota Corolla. Vying for the overall Class 12 title, James Cassidy had to settle for fifth in class at round three, but he certainly enjoyed the Monaghan stages. Keep right over press jump, two left, 40. Tight three right, keep in over press, and 138 over finish. Three, two left over press, and stop. Oh man, <laughs> you love that last bit. Yeah, <laughs> it was drier, you see. Yeah. After missing the opening round in Abbey Leaks, Vincent Collins was going well now and took the runner-up spot for the second event in a row. Defending Sligo Palace border champions Brian Armstrong and Aidan Gallagher took the Class 12 win in both the Border Series and the Triton National Championship. Gareth Black was still adjusting to the extra power in his 2-litre Class 13 Toyota Starlet and he moved to third on the points table after another decent performance. And the 3 left over Crest, don't cut, and the 2 right, and the long 3 left, opens to a 1 left over Flat Crest, 130, 4 right up and to opens 2 right. Local crew Gary Cassidy and Paul Kelly took third in Class 13. Johnny Jordan and Paddy McCrudden had to settle for second in Class 13 and 17th overall. But taking the Class 13 win and 12th overall were David Moffat and Martin Conley. The local crew were second quickest two-wheel drive and shared the overall lead with Brian Armstrong and Aidan Gallagher in the Sligo Palettes Border Championship. In Class 14, for modified cars with over 2.1 litre engines, Damien Gallagher took third place and finished 14th overall, just four tenths of a second behind J.F. Shovelin and Emmett Brosnan, who topped the Mark II Championship leaderboard after three rounds. But taking the Class 14 win were Kevin Eves and Chris Melly. They were the top two-wheel drive crew, finishing eighth overall and move into the lead of the Rally.ie two-wheel drive championship. One right, 40, tighten it now, one right, 40, six left, 40, six left, 60. It was a good old day now and it started off with a, a big push again, Damien, so um, no, it was a good old, it was a challenging day now, how the conditions were tricky, it was dry, it was wet, it was everything, so great stages, great fun.
To the four-wheel drive classes now, and in Group N, Shane Maguire and Anthony Nestor managed to get their overheating Mitsubishi home safely with first in class and 16th overall. Yeah, glad to get here this evening. Just it was looking like a good race with Michael, unfortunately, what happened to him this morning. But look, he'll be back to the next one. Niall Devine will all go again to race. The battle for Class 20 went right down to the wire, with Darren McKelvey and Dean O'Sullivan missing out on the top spot by just 4.3 seconds from class winners Michael Carbon and Connor Mohan, who finished ninth overall on their home rally. There was disappointment in Class 5 for Paul Barrett and Declan Tomaldi, who retired with mechanical trouble in the Fiesta or 5. Darren Gass and Enda Sherry took second in class and sixth overall in the for hire Skoda Fabia R5. One place ahead was the Fiesta R5 of Sam Moffat and James Fulton. The pair battled with a lack of power till replacing the spark plugs and coil at service. In class seven, Declan McCrory had been climbing up the top 10 leaderboard until retiring the Subaru after stage six. Hugh Hunter and Rob Fagg had been 10th overall until an off on stage 7 dropped them to 45th place. They eventually finished 5th in class 7 and 33rd overall. Kevin Barrett and Sean Mullally took 4th in class and 15th overall in the Triton Subaru. Pader Herson and Damian Connolly certainly didn't enjoy the third stage of the loop, with mishaps on each drive across it costing them dearly. They finished third in class and 10th overall. A misfire in the mini WRC dogged their rally and Joe McGonagall and Kieran Ganey had to settle for second in class and seventh overall. Differential trouble didn't help Declan and Brian Boyle's cause, but they were glad to take the class seven trophy in fourth overall after their off at the last round. 11.8 seconds ahead and third were Roy White and James O'Brien, whose consistency sees them stay second on the overall championship leaderboard. As expected, Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes really went for it on the final loop to try and reel in Donna Kelly and Connor Foley. They took five seconds off them on stage seven and again on stage eight, but Kelly and Foley took the final test by just half a second and held on to take the win by just 5.7 seconds in the end. What a finale to a great day's rallying. Long one right over double crest, from the 20 through the dip, turn five right, five left. One hundred, five right. It's nice to be uh, hunting sometimes. It's not great being hunted. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, look, it was, uh, it was a good, great result. And, of course, it's your own home rally, so it's extra special for you. It is indeed, yeah, and even, you know, last year I thought nipping it on the last stage, you know, as Donna says, we were we were hunting last year, but we were hunted this year, and it's not a nice feeling, um, but th the last stage was great. Massive push. And there's confirmation of the result at the Four Seasons Hotel Monaghan Stages Rally, which sees Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes extend their lead at the top of the leaderboard after three rounds. What a nail-biting finish here in Monaghan for round three of the Triton Showers National Rally Championship. Josh Moffat put in an epic battle in order to claw back that all-important time that he lost after a puncture on stage six. But it was Donna Kelly and Connor Foley who kept their composure to take the win here in Monaghan for a second time in a row. Join us next time when we head to Limerick for the Circuit of Munster. We'll see you then.